Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School, and today I'm going to give you three things you need to know about the MPV i3 to get you started. So number one is going to be your MPVI unit actually stores your credits here inside the unit. What does that really mean? Well, let's just say you've tuned a couple cars and maybe you need to change laptops. So how does that work? Well, it's actually really simple. You can actually use any laptop you want. You can use your buddy's laptop. The credits don't reside on the laptop. They actually reside and they're stored in the memory chip here. So all you have to do is get your software installed on the new laptop, resync the device, and then boom, you're up and running, good to go, which is actually really good for you. Which brings me to number two. What do I do if this is destroyed? Because we hear it all the time. Sometimes people will literally run it over with a car by accident. Sometimes somebody steals it and you just don't know. But here's the thing, guys. This is what a lot of shop owners and tuners overlook. This is one of those tools in your toolbox that actually goes up in value over time. So because of those things that I said could potentially happen to it, you need to have your shop insurance aware of that so that they know that maybe once a year or twice a year, you call them and you say, hey, this tool that I have has gone up in value by this amount of dollars because I've added this many credits to it. So if it's ever lost or stolen, they'll actually replace it for the proper value, or at least they should. But one little tip if you are ever in that situation, because sometimes it falls on the floor and it gets run over by a car, I've seen it plenty of times, save it, put it all, all the little pieces in a Ziploc bag and then let HP tuners know. And usually what they could do is assemble it enough to at least know that you are legitimate and you have your device and it was destroyed. And they'll, uh, with the purchase of a new device, I've seen them actually transfer your credits to the new device. So good thing, just keep it if you can. If it's stolen, totally separate issue between you and your insurance company. And then number three, how do I get my wideband data into my HP tuners unit? Because this is a common thing. Every tuner has to know how to do this, right? So I've got a wideband here. This is an AEM unit. And there's two different ways of getting your data into your HP tuners unit. The first and most common way for all of your 2008 newer vehicles is going to be to use the CAN bus plug that comes with your wideband. And it literally plugs in line here between the unit and the car. Super simple, easy setup. The tuning school, we've got a lot of great videos on how to do that. But let's say option two is your only bet. Maybe you've got a 2007 or older vehicle. Well, you're gonna need a way to get that data out of this wideband and into your HP tuners unit still. So if you have an MPVI3, you're gonna need what's called the ProLink Plus. So the ProLink Plus literally plugs right into the M8, which is a motorsports connector right here on the front of the unit. And then the other end of it goes into uh, the wideband's output, which is called analog output. So there's a ton of wires here, but honestly, there's only really two you need to worry about. One's gonna be a ground wire, and the other one's going to be a signal wire that comes out of the wideband, goes into the ProLink Plus, and then ultimately wakes, makes its way into the HP Tuners unit. From there, within the software, we also have a bunch of great videos for that, which is called Analog Input, on how to get your wideband into your HP Tuners unit using the Analog Input. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.